Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, Jordan, and I'm back with another drawing video. So this time I'm drawing Battle Angel Alita, and this is another anime slash manga which I haven't seen or read, but it was requested from me on my YouTube channel, so I decided to draw it, and I actually think this one turned out pretty cool. I've been drawing for all these years, but <laughs> sometimes I don't know if my drawings going to turn out good or not. So it's always a nice surprise when everything kind of goes smoothly and I'm actually fairly happy with how it turned out. I've got a few things I want to talk about in this video and like usual I'll probably just give you some general tips along the way and kind of explain what I'm doing, the whole art process. But I don't like to go too in depth with that because these videos go for quite a long time and I think it gets a little bit boring if I'm just talking about the art process. But there's a few things I want to mention. What I'm doing right now I think is pretty cool. It's got a bit of blue shading on the right hand side of the face and it kind of makes it look like there's like a blue light kind of shining up on it so it gives it like a really kind of interesting look and I think that's what really drew me to this image because I used reference for this and that's another thing I'm going to talk about in this video probably a little bit later I've had an interesting comment about using reference and I kind of want to talk about that a bit because it's something that I think is pretty relevant when it comes to art and just kind of talk about should you feel guilty about using reference and what's appropriate and what's taking it too far and that kind of thing. So stick around for that because I'm going to get into that more in depth and just kind of give my opinion on that. But first off, this is the first video using my new camera. I'm still kind of experimenting with it because I've used it a bunch since this video because I obviously record the videos earlier and it takes a while to edit it. So I've done some new stuff since then and I've kind of played around with the settings a little bit and I think I actually changed the settings a bit differently for the next couple of videos and then decide that I actually don't like it and change it back. Hopefully it's better than the other one. I still don't have my new lighting so that's going to make a big difference. It's still not the best lighting that I've got here and I've ordered my new lights but they're not coming in until the end of November so it'll be a little while before I can use them so they'll make a big difference as well but I'm still liking the new camera. It's a bit different from my old one. Just the whole zoom functionality is quite different so I can't actually zoom in as much as my old camera which is a little bit annoying but hopefully the picture quality is going to be a lot better obviously once I get the new lights as well. Now the biggest challenge for this drawing was drawing the grey tones in her arms and that's because my grey Copic markers are pretty much dead and I think they actually die in the next drawing after this which you'll see in the next video. They just come out really blotchy because there's barely any ink left in them so it's <laughs> really frustrating doing that but the cool thing is because I use my Prismacolors a lot I can just go over that and smooth it all out and it doesn't really matter too much. So that's just a cool technique if your markers are running low and that's just why I really like using my Prismacolor pencils on top of that because it smooths everything out really nice and it really helps with the blending especially if your markers are like dead. <laughs> I just really need to buy some more refills and I'm pretty tempted to buy another 72 set of Copics as well. I think it's just turning into an addiction really. <laughs> I don't smoke, I don't do drugs, but I spend all my money on art supplies. <laughs> I think I need some serious help. I can see myself in like 10 years time just begging on the street corners trying to get some money to buy some new Copics. <laughs> it's a grim future for us artists. Well, that got dark really quick. <laughs> Moving on. So I've had a few people ask in some of my previous videos, they kind of wanted to see some of my line work and that kind of thing. And that's just something I haven't really shown too much. I used to make line work videos and honestly, they weren't that popular. They're kind of just like not as interesting as watching coloring, honestly. But I feel like my line work has gotten a lot better since years ago, I guess, when I did more of the line work videos. And I kind of understand that a lot of people want to see the line work process as well. And I've actually got like a new line work pen that I use, the Copic Drawing Pen, and I've been using that a lot more and I'm really liking it. And I kind of think my line work's gotten a lot better since I kind of started using that and I've just kind of been experimenting and trying new things. So I kind of was thinking of different ways where I could make line work videos and not make them so they're really boring. <laughs> so I've come up with a few different ideas and I'll probably ask your guys' opinion on what kind of videos you want to see. Because basically, I don't really have time to make like full line work videos like for each one of these drawings. 
because ultimately I thought it would have been cool being able to upload like two videos a week. The first video being the line work and then the next video later in the week being the colouring of that drawing. But it just takes a lot more time than I've got at the moment because I narrate these videos as well so that takes extra time and just editing it all. It's not really possible for me to do that like two videos a week. So I've kind of been thinking about different ways to do it. And what I've been doing lately is just recording some of the line work process, not the full thing. Because honestly, when I do line work, I like to get really close to the paper. I like to spin the paper around a lot as well, so I can get kind of like smoother lines and what feels more comfortable for the way my hand moves, I guess. I don't know how to explain it, but you know, you always feel comfortable like stroking a certain way, I guess, if that makes any sense. So I'm always kind of moving the paper around and that doesn't really work the best for videos. I know I do that anyway when I'm colouring, but it's less extreme than the line work. So I've just been recording little snippets of the art process for my line works and I was kind of thinking of like compiling maybe a bunch of different line works for one video. So showing the process of a couple different drawings and then releasing like one inking video a month or something along those lines, just depending on how busy I am and that kind of thing. But also I'd like to kind of slow down the inking video a little bit because I understand these coloring videos go pretty quick. I need to speed them up so much because it's a pretty long process and it just gets boring if the videos go for too long. But with the inking videos, seeing as I'll be kind of not recording the whole process and just recording snippets here and there, I'll be able to kind of slow that down a bit and it won't be like too long of a video. So I think that'll be pretty cool. I'll probably try that out and then get feedback from you guys, see if you like it, having a bunch of different line work things in one video. Or if you guys don't like that, then I might just separate them and have like one character for each video, like the colouring stuff that I'm doing at the moment. But we'll see, I'll just kind of have a play with it and see what works and what doesn't. Alright, moving on. I want to talk a little bit about a comment that I got. I'll just read it out and then I'll dive right into it. Hey Jordan, I wanted to ask you a question. Every time I see your videos, I say holy shit, man you're good. <laughs> but you use reference a lot, and there's nothing wrong with that. But every time I try to use reference, the people around me make me feel like it's a horrible sin, not to mention the guilt. And I draw pretty good too. Not like you, but decent. The thing is, how do you feel about it? Do you think it's okay? Or at least at times when you see something cool and don't have the time to watch the entire show. I know you're super busy and all, but hope you can see this. It's something I've been having real trouble with. Thanks. Alright, this is a pretty massive topic. I could make a really big rant about this, but I'll try not to because I've kind of run out of time in this video, honestly. <laughs> I could just talk for ages about this. And first I just want to say that this is just kind of my opinion on this. I'm not saying it's right, and honestly my opinion on this pretty much changes. Like, if I made this video in a week, it would probably be a completely different... <laughs> I'd have a different perspective. I use a lot of reference for these drawings, and especially all the recent videos I've been making I've used reference for. But I always try and put a little bit of my own style into it, whether that's the way I colour it, or line it, or anything like that. And I think I don't really cop any grief for using reference for my drawings because people are able to enjoy it anyway. It's different enough that it's still enjoyable. It might be the same image, but it's done in a different way and it's some of my style still shows through. So I think people can appreciate that anyway. I just think you can learn so much from copying other artists, but at the same time you've got to have a little bit of integrity when it comes to that. You're not so much copying the other artist's style, but you're kind of trying to learn from it and take it in and then put some of your own spin on it. I think if you're trying too hard to be original, you're just missing out on so many learning opportunities from other artists who are already well established and have had so much time to practice and already develop their style that you're just kind of crazy if you're not even willing to learn something from them. So I guess what I'm saying is don't be ashamed to copy other artists because that's probably one of the best ways that we learn. We've been taught that way as kids, we'd always copy like our parents, our older brothers or sisters, whatever. That's kind of, in my opinion, the best way to learn. I'm not saying that you should steal other artists work and then kind of sell it off as your own saying that you kind of created this. Give credit where credit's due, but at the same time don't feel like everything you create has to be completely original because original probably doesn't even exist honestly. 
everything that we put out is kind of a culmination of different ideas and inspirations and we kind of bring it all together and then put our own little unique spin on it but at the same time it's not 100% original so the quicker you get out of that kind of mentality the quicker you'll be able to develop your own style and then maybe one day you'll have other younger artists copying your artwork trying to learn something. Well, it looks like we've run out of time in this video. I hope that kind of helps you out a little bit, even though I was kind of just ranting. All I'm trying to say is don't be afraid to learn from other artists and copying can be a really great way to do that. So that's about all we've got time for in this video. I'll be out with another drawing video next week and I'll see you guys then. Thank you.